Hey, and welcome to the show. Uh, it's Friday, uh, if you haven't noticed. Uh, it's the 7th of May. Uh, I, someone had actually tweeted this out earlier. Can you get to us now? <laughs> okay, so why the British state is a magic money tree. And I read through this whole thing earlier, and I'm like, someone who's actually getting to the right place. Um, government spending power is limited not by tax revenues or borrowing, but by the productive capacity of the UK economy and political will. Uh, so far, so good, at least in my opinion. The UK economy is uh, in deep trouble. The country is facing arguably the worst cost of living crisis since the early 1980s with inflation at a 40 year high and consumer confidence at its lowest level since 1974. Pressure is mounting on the government uh, to support the poorest who are facing huge rises in energy and food bills just as new tax rises and welfare cuts kick in. But the government continues to recite the mantra that there is no money tree or magic money tree. The latest plan is to cut 91,000 civil service jobs to fund tax cuts, a policy that would likely put many people out of work and thus reduce uh, consumer spending just when it just when it's a uh, um, uh, it just when it's most needed. There we go. She's. It, it looks like the uh, so, civil service jobs. Okay, so basically they're cut. They're cutting government. Uh, it seems like government uh, jobs in order to give. I'm guessing private corporation tax cuts to supposedly hire more uh what would be the point of that well actually come to think of it i think government actually uh provides benefits and all that stuff whereas private corporations don't have to uh this is what i know of anyway so let's see but does the government really need to spend uh, need money to spend for a number of reasons a uh, number of years excuse me some economists have been arguing that analogy of the government is a household i.e an agency that needs income to fund itself is misleading mft an increasingly prominent school of economics has gone further and argued that the state creates money when it spends while tax taxation and public borrowing remove money from the circulation uh, a new co-authored uh, working paper published by the UCL Institute for Innovation and Public Purpose involved in uh, in-depth analysis of the me mechanics of key institutions excuse me, uh, involved in UK government spending. Parliament, the Treasury, uh, the Bank of England, and the Debt Management Office I think it's probably CBO in, uh, in the United States, uh, among others, confirms the arguments of MMG economists apply to the UK. The British state always creates new money when it spends. Well, how does, how does government spending work? All state spending and, re and revenue collection is ultimately initiated through a body founded in 1787 known as the Consolidated Fund. The government has a special account at the Bank of England, which can be understood as an over, overdraft of the consolidated fund with no limits and no interest. When the government spends, this account is debited and the same amount of new money is credited to the government departments by the Bank of England appearing in their commercial bank accounts as new deposits. The consolidation, the consolidated fund account starts every day with a balance of zero, meaning no pre-existing money raised through a taxation or borrowing is used when the government spends. Rather than a household, it is more accurate to think of the state as all, an all-powerful monetary institution. It creates money in a similar way to modern commercial banks. 
or yeah, commercial banks. When you request a loan, the bank cover uh, converts your IOU to bank to the bank into liabilities upon itself. The appear that appear as newly created deposits that you can spend. Indeed, all money, including state money, is in, sen- is in a sense a relationship of credit and debit. The crucial difference is that while a commercial bank has a choice about whether to grant you a loan, the Bank of England has no such freedom. It is required to credit government accounts whenever Parliament activates spending and increases its IOUs in the consolidated fund. This is a mandated in a law that goes back to 1866. Parliament, Parliament's money creating power is thus sovereign. Another important difference is that government spending creates new money for the private sector without simultaneously creating a new private se- uh, sector debt, as is the case with commercial bank lending. Instead, the interest-free public debt that is created is owed to the public's uh, publicly owned Bank of, in- uh, bank of England, meaning the state effectively owes it to itself. Given the UK's high levels of corporate debt following the pandemic, which makes the private sector more vulnerable to an economic shock, increased government spending to support businesses and the wider uh, economy may make more sense for financial stability than additional corporate borrowing. The role of taxation and and borrowing. What then is the role of taxation, if not for financing uh, government spending? Revenues from taxation accumulate into the same government accounts held at the Bank of England and reduce the size of the consolidated fund overdraft. Taxation reduces the government's liabilities to the Bank of England, reversing the money creating or creation process and reducing the money supply. The, the, the key role of taxation is Uh, not funding the government's, but ensuring the government's IOUs are accepted by both the central bank and the private sector in this sense. Taxation is still vital to to spending since it is this right to tax and the powerful claim this creates on the country's, uh, wait a minute, uh, and the powerful claim, okay, this creates on the country's resources. That makes the government's IOUs the most creditworthy in society. The reason ster- sterling is a dominant currency and is unlikely to be, be surpa- unsurped by, for example, cryptocurrency is that we obli- obligate to, uh, by law to get, to get hold of it to pay our taxes. Countries that struggle to, ta- to tax their population effectively uh, tend to have weaker currencies because there is a less demand to for the d- domestic currency. The money created by the commercial banks uh, is also uh, implicitly underpinned by government debt because the state guarantees the first eighty-five thousand dollars worth of them, or eighty-five thousand pounds worth of them, in your bank account. The state also has the power, as we have seen to bail out any bank who colla- whose collapse threatens to destabilize the economy. Finally, what is the role of government borrowing? As, it, as with taxation, the government does not need to borrow to spend. Prior to the program of quantitative easing, or QE, that began in 2009, bond insurance or uh, uh, issuance there we go, could be seen as primarily supporting monetary policy. Government spending creates new money and liquidity reserves in the bank uh, banking system, which can affect the central bank's target interest rate. By issuing bank uh, bonds, the state withdraw liquidity from the banking system, neutralizing this impact. Indeed, the debt management office has in place a full funding uh, rule, which means that any outstanding balance in the consolidated funds are canceled out by debt issuance or selling bonds into financial markets. However, quantitative easing has flooded the bank banking system with, with liquidity with uh, 867 billion uh, pounds of bond, uh, bonds purchased to date. This led the Bank of England to pay interest on money held by banks to help target the interest rate effectively and make, uh, sorry, made changes 
and government spending less important to monetary policy. Today, the main function of government de debt is to provide the non-bank financial sector with a secure store of value and source of collateral. Since government debt instruments are the most desirable, safest interest bearing as assets available due to the state's inherent creditworthiness. There is no obvious relationship between this store value function and the government spending and taxing activity. Therefore, it is unclear why the full funded rule continues to lengthen by matching debt issuance pound for pound without, with outstanding balances in the government's budget. What are the implications? The findings of our paper should in, 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 in a rational world, oops, in a rational world state uh, and the state uh, household analogy. The mechanics of the UK spending process demonstrate beyond doubt that government spending is not dependent on raising taxes or its ability to borrow on financial markets. Fiscal policy and debt management strategy should be reformed to focus on how the government can best achieve uh, policy goals such as reducing economic inequalities, maintaining full employment, and, uh, and supporting the green transition. The main constraint on public spending should be whether the economy has the productive resources and capacity to absorb such spending without it, it le uh, leading to excessive prices or price rising, rises. For example, what types of spending could absorb labor is under, underemployed, underemployed poorer areas of the country, rather than pushing up wages in areas where the population is already fully and productively employed. As recent events have demonstrated, the causes of inflation can have very little to do with government expenditure and a lot to do with global dynamics beyond government control. Nevertheless, more effort should be dedicated to anal analysis and analyzing excuse me, the various inflationary and deflationary impacts of policy spending proposals in order to assess the need for relevant offsetting measures and less to concerns and less to concerns over debt sustainability and deficit. At the present juncture, a rational fiscal policy would be focused on providing greater financial support to those suffering most from the cost of living crisis. In the end, or in the short term, this could involve an immediate uplift in welfare benefits for the unemployed and poorly paid. In the medium term, it should involve a nationwide home retrofitting program that could cut fuel bills, create well-paid jobs, and reduce carbon emissions. It could be matched by heavier taxes on the wealthy and on the energy companies and tech firms that have benefited most from the COVID-19 and the energy crisis in order to help contain inflationary pressures by shrinking the money supply. But let's be clear, the reason for raising such taxes would not to be funding or fund the government to support lower income households. Understanding the, me the mechanics of government spending should also prompt a rethink of worries about the independence of the central bank from the fiscal policy. Uh, frequently raised concern uh, during both the financial crisis and COVID-19 crisis has been that the Bank of England is uh, monetizing the government's debt. In fact, the bank is completely powerless to stop the government and, and parliament creating money whenever it is, whenever it so wishes. This is not to say other criticism of QE, such as its impact on inflation, uh, asset prices are not merit, are not merited. But the concerns over a return to a dangerously inflationary regime of fiscal dominance are misplaced and instead the government's role at the very heart of the monetary system should be more widely recognized. Ultimately then from, ultimately then from an institutional and economic perspective, perspective excuse me, there is a magic money tree but it should be understood as a sovereign money tree sown and, and harvested by parliamentary legislation that compels the banking system to produce new money upon demand. The true limits on the government spending power are the productive capacity of the UK economy, the political will of government and the cons consent of parliament. Let's hope, the, let's hope this better understanding will lead to a better policy. 
Uh, first of all, here, here. Uh, second of all, uh, you can think of it the same way uh, in the U.S. Actually, you can think of it the same way in any sovereign country as far as their monetary control of their own currency and floating exchange rates and everything else in between. So uh, once I find out uh, who actually um, said, unfortunately, I lost the actual... Uh, I on, the, on my Twitter, I lost who, who put that up in the first place. Once I find it, then I'll get the full credit, obviously. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much what I wanted to uh, put down. And I have developed another, my, my YouTube channel, uh, Just Calvin, uh, in quotes, uh, Leftist News. Um, I will put the link in the, the uh, prescription, uh, prescription in the description below as well. Up there, I have my footage from yesterday's protest. Um, and yeah, it took, it took quite a while. Uh, my other career is really slow as far as the work goes, but anyway, um, that's what I got. That's what, that's what I got for the day. Um, support and support this channel. Peace out for now. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. That was, <laughs> wow. I have another Raider. Or someone just played Screamo. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I have another raid, though. Um, <laughs> Andy Attack 2018, thank you for the raid. And this and Slayer Music, thanks for playing Screamo. Um, 